Assalamu alaikum everyone and Ramadan Mubarak. My name is Azza Abu Saif and I am the executive director here at CARE Arizona. We have a very, very special guest joining us today, the Honorable Secretary of State Katie Hobbs, who has led a life full of service to others, beginning from a volunteer at her church, to working as a social worker, to working in the largest domestic violence centers in the U.S., to serving in the Arizona House of Representatives and Arizona Senate as a minority leader, um, to being our Secretary of State here in Arizona. Welcome, Secretary of State. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, in Iftaring with Care, and the floor is all yours. Well, hi, thank you so much, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really happy to be able to participate in this event. Um, and so I thought I would give a little background in how uh, I got started, um, which you touched on um, in the introduction. Um, and then I want to talk about what we're doing uh, to engage voters in the process and um, just make sure you all know how secure our elections are and what we what we did during this last election cycle to ensure that and then moving forward how we're continuing um, to uh, to maintain voters trust and confidence in our democratic processes including uh, the important uh, elections so uh, so I started with a career in social work. Um, I have always been focused on making space for everyone in the process and really working to lift the voices of those who are underrepresented. Um, and so I was working on public policy issues and really came to understand that policy change is really difficult. Um, and sometimes um, when, um, and, and I was working on really nonpartisan policy issues, uh, sometimes you have to change the people that are making the policy if you can't change policy. And so um, I decided to run for office and bring the voice of a lot of underrepresented people in our state to the legislature. I spent eight years in the state legislature. Part of that time was the Senate minority leader and really throughout that time have, have focused on making government work better for uh, the people of Arizona. And from that perspective, decided to run for Secretary of State, uh, really recognizing that we had so many opportunities to expand the freedom to vote, and there was just so much more that um, the government should and could be doing in this regard. Um, I am continue to be committed to ensuring that government in Arizona is accountable and transparent and working for all Arizonans. And I, I will continue to do that throughout my my career in politics as long as Arizonans will have me. So, um, you know, um, as Secretary of State and Arizona's chief elections official, I really am in a unique position to see firsthand the value of each vote that's cast in an election. Uh, when I first came into this office, my focus was on building partnerships and expanding the franchise of voting, working to see what we could do from our position um, as the chief election office for the state to engage more voters in the process. And investing in that really paid off, um, especially looking at the outcome, the, the turnout in the 2020 elections, which which was record in both, in all three, the March presidential preference election, the August primary and the November uh, general election, despite the monumental challenges that were presented by the pandemic, as well as a plague of mis and disinformation about the integrity of our election and processes. Um, the recent, this recent election was historic for many reasons. Um, as you probably are aware, preparing for any election is really an immense undertaking even in normal circumstances. And um, obviously this year we did not have normal circumstances. Um, the complexity this year was, was definitely compounded by those challenges that I've already mentioned. The, the global pandemic and the, um, the misinformation that we, that we had to push back against um, at every turn. Despite this, we had an extremely well-run election. We saw historically high voter participation and record registration. Um, there were more than 3.42 million ballots cast in this election and turnout was nearly 80%, um, which is pretty good. Um, this was in part achieved because of the partnerships that we developed with election officials around the state and advocacy organizations that are working directly with voters and with voters themselves. 
And it is these partnerships that we're gonna rely on um, moving into the future to work to protect the progress that we've made and, and pushing ahead. Um, when the 15th Amendment became law in our country, this amendment provided exclusion, pro prohibited, sorry, prohibited exclusion from voting on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The response to this um, by many former Confederate states was to implement Jim Crow laws that disenfranchised black and poor white men from voting through poll taxes, literacy tests, and other restrictions. And it took years to dismantle these practices. And we are up against some of the same push right now. And we have to ensure that these kind of these kind of ideas don't become laws again, because we know what the fight is going to be like to dismantle those kind of things. So, um, so we are we are we are in a similar moment when the freedom to vote is being threatened. Um, this is we're seeing this in Congress, we're seeing in state legislatures, including our own, a handful of politicians that are using the lies about the 2020 election to build barriers to voting. Um, the state legislature is absolutely attacking voter rights. Um, we have lawmakers who are trying to rehash debunked theories about the security of the 2020 election as an excuse to limit access to voting. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's important here to highlight the things that we do do to ensure security and fairness in our elections. And these are things that are written into statute and procedure and are followed every election. And we've been trying to really provide information about these practices to voters so that it demystifies the process and that they understand that a lot of what's going on out there to undermine the integrity of the election really is false information and not how things are practiced um, at all. So to start with, uh, we, um, in any election equipment that is purchased for use in Arizona for state or federal elections must first be certified by the U.S. Elections Assistance Commission, and then it is reviewed and recommended for certification by our Election Equipment Certification Advisory Committee, and this is a process which is publicly noticed and held according to open meeting laws, which means that there is opportunity for the public to um, attend and participate through public comment um, in those meetings. Um, all voting equipment that is used in federal and state elections in Arizona also undergoes a logic and accuracy test by each county before each election, followed by a logic and accuracy test of randomly selected equipment by our office in each county. So in 2020, these LNA tests were conducted three times across the state um, for the March election, the August primary election, and um, the November general election. Additionally, the 2019 election procedures manual that our office put, put out uh, requires an additional post-election logic and accuracy test conducted by the counties. Um, so ensuring that there was nothing that changed with the equipment before and after the election and ensuring that it was functioning properly. All of these logic and accuracy tests, both before and after the election, are publicly announced. Um, so again, available for public observation and they include representatives of each political party. And then also following every election, counties conduct a post-election hand count audit, this is in statute, um, of randomly selected precincts. Um, and again, this audit includes participation of each political party and is available for public observation as well. Um, we also, in terms of election workers, the people that are, that, um, are employed in the election process, which as you can imagine, um, the poll workers, the people involved in tabulation, there's a lot of temporary staff that are brought on specifically for the election. There's a requirement that there's a balance of political parties in, in all these processes. So there's a mix of members of each party at every polling place in the state and every um, tabulation um, uh, 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 board that, that um, is working in tabulation. And so some people wondered why when they applied to be a poll worker, they were asked their party and that's why. It's to make sure that there's not any polling place that specifically is staffed by all Democrats or specifically staffed by all Republicans to, but to make sure that there's a balance and it's fair. We also allow um, in every polling place, um, each political party can have a credentialed poll observer um, so that in their role is to you know, if there's something they're concerned about as observers, they can, they have a process to report that. 
come, and that's allowed in every polling place in the state. Um, so again, like poll workers, the, the tabulation functions require a balance of political parties and also credentialed observers of each party are allowed in every tabulation room. Also new this election, um, we allowed credentials observers um, th throughout the process where ballots um, were being, the early ballots were being signature verified. Um, there are also cameras. Every aspect of ballot handling um, in, in the tabulation centers of each county are, um, are live streamed. Um, so there's cameras in every tabulation center and those live streams can be accessed on the internet by anyone anywhere in the world with access to the internet. They can watch the tabulation happening in counties across the state of, of Arizona. Um, despite all of these measures that are in place, this legislative session, um, one Arizona lawmaker introduced a bill that would give the legislature the power to revoke the certification of presidential electors chosen by Arizona voters, basically making a vote for president meaningless in Arizona unless the majority party in the legislature likes the winner. Other legislators have proposed new restrictions on who can receive a ballot by mail or how and when the ballot has to be returned. As well as, as well as limitations on early voting. And this is in a year following between 80 and 90% of voters using Arizona's early voting options. Now is not the time that we should be ma making our democracy smaller. It really is time to double down and remove the archaic barriers that disenfranchise Arizonans and look for new solutions um, that will help us to secure our elections and promote voter confidence. And this is, this is why my team promoted a legislative package that would work to streamline election administration, expand voting rights, and enhance election security. Um, so hopefully someday, um, probably not this uh, legislative session, that, that, that bill package will actually get a hearing because it is meaningful legislation that will actually improve our elections. Um, so, there are folks, and, and I hear this all the time in when we are talking about the, the partisan differences in approaches to election legislation. Um, there are those who want us to believe that elections today can either be secure or they can be accessible, but that you can't have both. And this is absolutely a false choice. We can, and we do have both. And that was, that was born out in the 2020 elections, which saw historic participation, not just here in Arizona, but around the country and was the most secure election that we've had um, in the country. Um, and that was attested to by the cybersecurity uh, um, officials who work for the federal government, who their job is all about election security. This is a message that we have to continue to share um, in order to dispute this false choice that's being presented. Um, and because that, because no, nobody wants to have to choose between those two things. And, um, you know, some folks are trying to make us think that that we have to, that if we have elections that are more accessible, that they're less secure, and that's just not the case. I have mentioned already that misinformation and disinformation pose, or that, that they were a huge challenge in this election, in this past election. And really, I this is what keeps me up at night. They the misinformation, disinformation poses a major, major threat to our democracy. And the viral nature of this threat, how quickly things can spread through social media means that we have to work to prepare people to spot, spot these falsehoods. And I think the best way to really do that is to turn to trusted sources of information, like the information that comes from election officials. Our office put together a, a really robust public education campaign during this last election, um, but we rely on those people in the community that are also sharing election information to make sure that they're sharing it from those reliable sources. And we put together a comprehensive website that really had everything that people needed to know to vote safely um, in the last election. And many of the resources that we put together to educate the public are still available on that website. And that website is Arizona.vote. So if you want to kind of look at, um, you know, if, if there's um, information you're hearing about the election and you're not sure, that one website, Arizona.vote, is a very trusted source that has accurate information and can help demystify some of these, the misinformation that's out there. Um, it is our job 
as election officials to continue to be transparent and accountable. Um, and, and we should be the first stop for election information. And so anyone else who is, is um, sharing information to help make voting more accessible should really just make sure that they're getting information from there. And that's a really important way that you can help to, to tell the truth about what, what happened in, um, in this election. I can't say enough that elections really are about partnership. Um, I talked about the work we did to build partnership with our office, local election offices, um, advocacy organizations, and, and voters directly. We are committed to continuing and strengthening these partnerships. Um, and just with that in mind, I, uh, in terms of, of empowering your own community, um, in, I encourage you to make sure that you are registered to vote. Um, and if you are registered, um, just remember to check your registration on a regular basis to ensure that your information is up to date and accurate. Um, and this will ensure that when it's time to vote that you are able to do that um, without any, any problems. Um, and please, again, look for information from trusted sources. Again, our office has these resources available at Arizona.vote. And obviously, as we head into the next election, we'll be updating all the information so that it is as current as possible. Uh, so really, um, thank you so much for inviting me to spend this time with you. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to help engage uh, more folks in the process and to be able to continue telling the truth about, about the 2020 election. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Secretary Hobbs, and we look forward to the 2022 elections where we're going to be getting all our information from your website. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.